this is an 1198 engine and I'm just going to check the valve clearances on the vertical cylinder try and work around the camera hopefully I won't knock it and give you blurry vision we'll see how we go I've checked the horizontal and it appears somebody may have been in here because they are fairly tight so I'll start with a 0 0.08 gauge or 3 thou and just see what fits and what doesn't so that's a bit tight drag there they're not but just all the openers should fit at this unless they're tight but none of these are tight there's a bit of drag on that one there and on this inlet so I'll go to a 0 0.06 fits easy and fits easy so we'll call those two 0 0.06 write that down okay so we've got 0 0.06 on those two I'll get a 0.1 or fourth hour gauge that exhaust is a bit tight at four which is nice Three thousand is good. The four thousand point one's got a bit of drag, so we'll call that a point zero eight, which is nice. Both our exhaust closers are nice and tight. This inlet's a bit loose. We'll just go through the openers. Point one, they're all fine. Point one three or five thou. That exhaust opener there is dragging heavily at that. Right hand's fine at 0.13. They're both fine. And that inlet closing is still fine. Okay, so we get a 0.15 or 6 thou. It's fine. It's not really fine. There's certainly drag on the closer there. So I think we'll call the closer a 0.13. Let's grab the 0.13 again. Yep. So that exhaust, that inlet closer is a 0.13. And this exhaust, it's a bit of drag at 0.15. I think it's okay. A bit of drag on that one at 0.15. Okay, so we're just checking with a 0.17 or 7 thou. That one's okay. That one's not. And that one's not. So we'll call those two right hand openers 0.15s. And if we get a 0.2 mil or 8 thou, that's tied on that one. So we'll call that a 0.18 or 7 thou. So really on this one, the things that concern me mainly is this tight exhaust opener at a point 0.1 um, I think I'll do something about that but I probably won't adjust anything else might take a little bit out of this closer good that I'm here uh, point 0.13 is okay but I usually like to get the uh, the clearances on the closers the exhaust closers down to 0 0.05 to 0 0.07 which is two to three thou on the inlets I aim for 0 0.07 to 0 0.1 which is three to four thou and on the openers I like 0 0.1 to 0 0.13 on the inlets which is four to five thou and on the exhaust openers 0 0.15 to 0 0.17 which is six to seven thou so I might loosen that exhaust up a little bit that's the one that concerns me the most the others I'll do just because I'm in there to cover the tops off. 
So I'll just pull the caps off. I would normally use my... Oops. Because of the way the camera is sitting on the bench and the engine's on the little trolley. It's all wobbling around a bit. So hopefully you aren't feeling seasick. Okay. I normally use a spinny T-handle for these, but I would spinny T-handle into my camera. I don't want to do that. To get the cam caps off, just get a couple of long 6mm screws. Screw them into the holes. Now you can screw all the way down and it will lift the cap up. I usually only do that if I really have to. Otherwise just... You can sometimes just screw the screw into it and shake it loose. Certainly the left hand side is easy on the, the right the right hand side with the uh, seals in here and they're usually elastic in to some extent. Often the, uh, the cams want to come out because the seal is just stuck into the, the cam cap. You can get it out like so. And if you, often if you have trouble getting it out, just push the seal sideways and then I'll release the cam nicely. Sometimes you get a whole lot of oil sitting in here because this engine's been sitting for a while. I'm guessing most of the oil's run away. You will have silicon sealant up here, so try not, you've got to get it off without it getting inside. So just scrape that off and catch the debris as it comes off. A little bit harder around these ones when the the little locating pins stay in the engine. Sometimes you have to go the other way. Just, just don't push it into the head cavity. And that should have most of our silicon sealant out of the way. First I'm going to do, and I'm not really doing closing clearances on the exhaust side at least, but this is just a clear plastic tube and I poke it down the oil return holes. The oil return holes on these, I'm going to lift the closing, the opening rocker up. The oil return holes on these are much more in the way than they are on the other four valves and you don't want to drop collets down them. So I usually plug them up and the clear plastic tube is the best way to do it, although it's being a bit annoying at the moment. Usually it slides right in. Hmm. There we go. Uh, because I'm only doing one exhaust opener, I won't push the exhaust rockers down. Just pop this one out. And I'll find a shim that's about half or 0 0.05 mil smaller. I'll put it in. Okay, the shim that was in there was a 3.04, and so this one is a 2.99. So hopefully that'll fix that. Now on the inlet side, I was going to take a little bit out of this closer. So there's a couple of things I'm going to do. First is get this old, probably a triple nine fuel pump O-ring. 
and just pop that around there to hold the opening rockers up. And then to hold the closing rockers down, this is a, an original tester strata tool that just goes over the rockers like so. And you can use it to lift the, pull the rockers forward, which makes it nice and easy. Um, there's one of these for the 999 or 998 engine inlet and one for exhaust. An exhaust one <coughs> is a bit narrower. Not much, but a little bit. And this exhaust one, I've actually cut the handle off and cut the little handle in half. And so that side is 749 uh, exhaust rocker spacing. That's 998, 999, 1098, 1198 exhaust rocker spacing. And that's inlet rocker spacing for 999, 1098, 1198. Uh, just handy tools. The factory tool for holding the 998 rockers down is this one. And you push that in. It doesn't really work so well on the 1098 rockers. Um, I think it has too much uh, preload and tends to push the rockers down too far. I made one out of a piece of thick, well, we can call it wire, we can call it rod, I suppose. And I use it to hold the rockers forward. So I put the tool in and then we push this down behind and like so. Let's make sure they sit down. And so now both closing rockers are held forward. We have to, again, you need to be careful you don't open the, the bottom of the rocker into the valve stem seal. So don't get too carried away. Um, but that's a really easy way to hold the rockers down. This is just a piece of rod bent up. So now we'll turn the engine over and we'll use the piston to lift the valve up until the valve come up then. So when the valve's lifted up, we pull the opening shim off and now you can see the collets on top of the valve. I'll take my glove off so I really can't grab hold of collets with the glove on. And the valve wants to keep dropping. I often do is just lift the valve up, just push on the valve with a little pick to hold it up and that gives me more room and then I just try and lift the collets off. Now sometimes the collets are really stuck on the valve stems. I thought this one was but it's fine. And I try and take them off so that I know how they came off so I can put them back the way they were. Um, if you don't put the collets back the way they were, if they're upside down from where they were, or one of them's upside down, and they had a bit of wear on them, when you put it back in again, you'll get a, a much reduced clearance based on the collets, regardless of the shim. So it just leads to complete inconsistency, and it's a real nightmare. So I would recommend doing everything you can to make sure you know which way the collets came out, or if you can't, you look at them and you work out which way they came out and put them back in the way they were. And you can see on them the wear marks. I have a wear mark on the inside at the top and on the outer edge at the bottom. Um, sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you need the magnifying glass or the strong glasses. And uh, you can see. So I'll measure the shim and we need one that's about 0 0.05 bigger. The shim that was in there was a 3.19 or so. It's a little bit odd in how it measured. Um, so I've got a 3.26. So we'll pop that in. And we'll put the collets back in. Um, before I'll put the collets back in, on the collets, there's a little sharp edge just here on one end. This end's got a a flare cut on an angle and this way there's a burr when they've been stamped. So I put it in a vise in a pair of aluminium jaws and just use a little file and file that off. Just so they sit in a little bit better. It's not a lot but it helps a little bit. So we've got both our little collets <coughs> with their sharp edge filed off. I know which way they were in beforehand, so I'll just pop them back in. 
is the fiddly part on one side. I used to use the shim to pick the valve up, rotate it around to move the collet around. I try not to touch the collets once I've got them on because they can just pop off really easily. Sometimes it takes a, an effort to get them off and sometimes they just jump off. So I think they're both in situation. In situ. So now I will just pull this out. On these 1098s, the rockers go very close to the cam carrier saddles. So this tool doesn't work as well as it does on a triple nine. Uh, you end up doing that. Um, this one, you can see the valve's a bit proud compared to this one because the cobots aren't sitting in. And get a little pointy tool and just give it a push. And they should usually or snap into position. Maybe they are home. I give the valve a bit of a snap shut. And that seats them nicely. On the 1098s and 1198s, the valves are a bit proud of the closing shim. On the Desmo Quattros, and even triple nines and things, the valves generally always flat with the top of the shim. This opener was a little bit loose, so I'll take it down a bit as well. Okay, so I've got a opening shim. It's a bit bigger than the one that was in there. I actually um, will, am going to pretty much swap the opening shim from here with this opening shim, which works nicely sometimes. So I'll put that in. When you put the opening shims on, make sure you can spin them. If they don't turn, pull it out, find another one. Otherwise, it's, it's not sitting nicely or it's jammed somehow. So pull the O-ring off. Pull the drain blockers out. Now we're going to put the cams back in. So we need to clean all the oil off these surfaces. So when the cams go, or when the cam caps go on, there's no oil between the cap and the top of the head. So you don't want anything getting in there and giving you a false torque. I'll let a good wipe. Actually just wipe out where the seals sit. So if all that's free of oil. Cam. Now you can't put the wrong cams, or you can't put the cams in the wrong places because when you try and put it in, you'll actually see that the lobes stop them sitting where you want them to sit. But they do have markings on them, and here it says VS901, and that's the camshaft ID, and VS is vertical. Scarico, which is vertical exhaust. So I'll just pop that in. And the inlet cam will have VA, which is vertical aspritzoni, I think is how you say it. is just there and again 901 is the camshaft ID. The cam IDs vary all over the place and there's no real method to any of the numbering. These M8 bolts go to 25 newton meters. I always talk them up when I'm doing a valve clearance check. And just clean up the pulley side cap. Again, I just try and scrape off any of the sealant 
Put on the cap. Pop the cap on. You're going to just sit down under these dowel pins, which can be a little bit hard at times. There we go. Screws in. Usually I spin the cams around to open the valves up. At the moment the piston's still up in the way. So I'll move the piston out of the way. You can turn the cam over. If you've got a clearance too tight or if you have too little overall clearance, which is the closing and the opening added together, some cams, like some of the ST3 inlet cams or inlet valves, you need 0.25 combined clearance. If you go under that, either opener or closer, they'll sort of bind. Um, so you just want to turn them over, make sure they turn nicely. Which they both do. You can really feel it when they start to bind. Usually it's sort of on the, as they're opening or they're closing on the ramps they, is when they get tight. So we adjusted this opener. So we wanted a 0 0.15, 0 0.15 or 6 thou. <clears throat> and a 0.18 or 7 thou is not going to go through. So that's nice. It's a success. And we adjusted opener and closer here. So try 0 0.08. It's tight. I'll try the 0 0.05. That's tight. This is what happens sometimes. You get an overshoot situation. That's a 0 0.04. As it comes around, it gets tight. So you'd say that one's probably 0 0.03 which is too tight and you can get that if the shims are a bit odd to measure or sometimes you just get clearances that don't work like you think they should so you don't ever just put a shim in and assume it's right and go sometimes I had a bike last week that probably had one valve on each head I might have had closers in and out you know six seven times on, each, on them. the rest of them first time fine and you get one or two that just take forever it's really frustrating <laughs> On this side, the opener, it's a 0.1, it's a 0.13, and it's a 0.15, that's a bit tight, so we'll call that a 0.13, and that's fine. The rest of them will leave around 0.15, it is a, going to be a track race bike. Um, so I need to open that closer up a little bit to get to where we want it to be. The issue with now what I'm going to put in there is that you need to decide if you think that the shim we've put in is consistent with any other size shim we put in. And so I think I put a 3.26 in, so do I need to go to a 3.23 or is there something wrong with that shim? So you've got to work out which way you go. Okay, so the cam cap's off. Pop the cams out again. <clears throat> Sometimes you can just push this down, put the holder in and slide it across and push it down. One thing with the tester strator engines you need to be aware of is that all these edges are really sharp machine surfaces <laughs> and uh, it's really easy to dig your fingers into them and put gouges in your fingers, that sort of stuff. I've lost a fair bit of blood to tester strutters over the years. So just uh, look after yourself when you're in there. Don't try and do anything that's going to hurt you. So we turn the piston back to the crank back to lift the piston up again. So now the valve sitting on top of the piston. Pull the opener out. Let me drop the shim down, it's quite stuck. Sometimes the shims can get a bit stuck on the collets. Usually you've got this little 3-8 extension and just tap the shim down. 
I find the 3.8 extension is by far the most reliable tool for that job for whatever reason it just does it really well so one of the collets has fallen off I should be able to lift it up the way that it was get it to sit back in there yeah maybe I might need to look at that one so the shim the shim originally was sort of a 3.19 or so it was varied a bit this is a 3.26 I might try 3.24 because sometimes you just don't know if this shim is wrong or the original shim was giving an inc inconsistent measure so you don't know which way to go. So we'll try 3.24 and if we get a huge clearance again then we'll have to go back to a 3.26 or something. Okay so this is a 3.24, pop that in, this is the collet, I know the way this one came out. So we'll pop it back in. Oops, Oops. lid off. They can slide off. These collets, they can be incredibly annoying little things to play with. But overall, they're not as bad as people like to make out. Let's put the strong glasses on and check the shape for this one. And I just dropped it. That's the other problem with collets. They're tiny and they're really easy to drop. Okay, so I found the collet. And just having a look at it with the strong glasses to see which way it was in. And I'll pop this back in. Like so. And if we turn the engine over, drop the piston, we can push them down. And it just helps keep them in position. Make sure the, the other one's in the right spot. Now, I just pull this out. Again, get the valve a snap shut. Be careful when you do that that the shim doesn't drop down and expose the collets, and then when you lift, let it go, it fires the collets out to who knows where. It's a really easy way to lose collets. Uh, our opening shim was good, so let's put it back on. Again, just make sure it turns. Now we can put the cam back in. And so we get this time. Again, I just wipe the oil off the cam cap faces. You always get oil back there. It's sort of impossible to avoid realistically, but I try and keep as much of it off as possible. Make sure there's no debris sitting in the, the cam bearing saddles. Okay, so I'll pop our camshaft back in and pop cam caps back on. Only doing the inlet cam this time because that's all we need to get right. <clears throat> okay, we'll turn the cam over again just to make sure it doesn't bind. It's nice and free. We'll see what we get this time. 0 0.08. Bit of drag on that. And it's a 0 0.06. So call that. Yeah, definitely not an 8. It's sort of loose around there, comes around, it starts to drag. And by the time you get to here, it's really tight. So call that a 0 0.06. That was the 3.23 shim. The original was about 3.19, so it's only 0 0.04 difference in shim thickness, but it's given us about 0 0.0607 difference in actual valve clearance. Um, and you get the inconsistency at times. If you get it results being inconsistent, don't think it's you. It might be you, it's more likely the engine. Um, so that's the valve clearance is adjusted. We pull the cams off cam caps off, pull the cam out, clean it all up, put a bit of sealant on, put it back together again, put a set of belts on it, and then we can do the cam timing.
And what I usually do at this point of time is wash my hands and put the gloves back on. That way my hands don't get all oily and dirty. Which uh, might sound like I'm being a bit of a princess, but uh, the gloves have made a massive difference to my hands over the years. My hands used to crack, particularly in winter. All my knuckles would crack and and uh, they just, they wouldn't heal and it was horrible. So the gloves are great. 